Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Special Edition. With sun and fun right around the corner, it's time to think about all the new planes we'll see from high-speed four-seaters to two-seat motor gliders and trainers that will have the Pipistrol name attached. The first aviation special event showing of the Pipistrol Panthera will offer flyers a close-up look at the 200-knot Speedster. Welcome to the special edition of Airborne. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We are barely a week and a half away from the first aviation event of 2021. But not only that, this is the first major aviation event in over a year since the pandemic shut everything down. But now it's time to see the latest and greatest in planes, products, and cool aviation stuff. And Sun and Fun 2021 is the place to do so. One of the sport aviation's most versatile product lines is coming to Lakeland, courtesy of Pipistrol USA. Some five aircraft are expected, starting with the new four-place Pipistrol Panthera high-speed cruiser to the Sinus motor glider, the Verus SW touring aircraft, and the Alpha trainer. An electrically powered Taurus, powered assisted glider is also expected to make an appearance. ANN Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell interviewed Pipistrol USA's Michael Coates from way down in Australia about his expectations for Lakeland and some of the news we can expect, especially on the electric airplane front. Join us as we get an advanced look at some of the best in airplane goodness coming our way in less than two weeks, courtesy of Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. Michael Coates, our esteemed Pipistro colleague. First of all, welcome to Aero News, Airborne and all that. And we are less than two weeks out from Sun and Fun. What do you got new for this? What do you have new for us this year? Well, it's hard to believe it's actually coming that quickly. Um, Man, it's been a long time yeah, coming, hasn't it? We've had, the, we've had the brakes on for so long. And, and, and then we've been saying, well, yes, it's on, but it's not going to be on. But you know, it's actually now going to be on. So it's battle stations. Oh, We're there you go. Racing around, getting everything ready. And uh, two weeks is only 14 days, and that's not very long. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting on top of it all. So what's new for this year? What's what's primary from Pipistro? Well, we, were, we brought the Panthera, the first one, into the U.S. last year, which was going to be debuted at Oshkosh. But, of course, that didn't happen. So the first U.S. public showing of the Panthera um, is going to be um, at this year's Sun and Fun. So that's, um, that's really exciting to, uh, to have that. Um, it'll be in the main aircraft display area. And we've also got over in the, what I still call the ultralight area or where the LSAs are or the ultralight runway is it some way sometimes called. We're going to have a Sinus, a Virus SW, a Pipistrel Alpha trainer, and I believe a fourth aircraft. Okay. on display this year. So, you know, we're gearing up for five aircraft on display. After the break, Mike and Jim chat about the features of the rest of the Pipistrol line and some of the unique features each possesses. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. Mike and Jim discuss more about Panthera, Sinus, Virus, Taurus, and the Alpha Trainer. 
let's quickly summarize what each of these aircraft are for those who have been sitting in a cave in Botswana somewhere and really don't understand what each aircraft does because the Pipistrel line covers quite a bit of ground. So start with Panthera, work your way down. Tell yeah. us what each of these airplanes is and does. Well, the Panthera is our flagship model, for want of no better word. It's a four-seat aircraft. Um, it's on its way to full certification, but at the moment it's available to uh, be flown in the experimental category. Um, there's already three in the US with a couple more on the water now. So, um, you know, they're on their way out of the factory. They're being very well received. It's a four-seat aircraft that I know you're familiar with because you've done a, a mini flight test in it. And, uh, oh, I'd say mini, you've done a full flight test in it. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very, very nice aircraft and it's receiving a lot of um, justified attention. And um, the orders are slowly uh, coming in from customers, which is very pleasing to see at this difficult um, global financially stressed time. People are out there are still looking for opportunities to, uh, to live their life. Mm -hmm. And um, also because it's a fast aircraft at around 200 knots, you can actually fly, you know, what you would do in a commercial aircraft, you know, like a, a jet, you can fly in a Panthera in a similar time because mm -hmm. you're not waiting in queues at airports. So it's, it seems to be becoming a very popular option to look at for, you know, the, the traveling executive market. Tell us about the Sinus. The Sinus is um, an aircraft first developed in 1995, but it's been sort of reborn time after time after time. And it still is one of our best sellers. It's a, a wide wingspan aircraft sold as a touring motor glider, 50 foot wingspan, um, it'll cruise at about 110 to 115 knots on about 3.1 gallons per hour. So very, very fast, very, very efficient. You can turn the engine off, feather the propeller and go soaring in the aircraft. It's got a glide ratio of just under 30 to one. So, okay. um, you know, sales of Sinus will slow down sometimes and then all of a sudden another 10 orders will come through. So it's just one of these planes that just... Um, it just keeps going and going. What about the Virus SW? The Virus SW is a, is a fast touring aircraft. Um, it runs a Rotax 100 horsepower typically, normally the fuel injected version. It'll cruise at 147 knots for about four gallons per hour. It's a fast and exciting aircraft. Um, if you decide to turn the engine off, you can still glide in that aircraft, surprisingly. It's got a glide ratio of about 20 to 1. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice aircraft, and it's, it's really the fast tourer in our two-seat range. Interesting. And finally, the Alpha Trainer. The Alpha Trainer is the one that um, has exceeded everyone's expectations since it was introduced. I still remember when I was you know, at the factory talking to them about, you know, a new low cost option for flight training. And I met some initial resistance um, and then the factory sort of slowly came around to it. And it's gone on now to be the biggest seller for the company. You know, there's commercial orders of 200 for the Indian Air Force or, or combined forces, which they use for flight training. There's flying schools all across the US with more than six to 10 in their fleet. And they are going really, really well. The students are finding them very enjoyable to fly. Um, they're easy to fly, but they can also handle the advanced side of training as well. So upset recovery and um, running costs are just nominal. They're, they're you know, truly the, the best aircraft in the industry for uh, for flight training unless you uh, talk about electric aircraft. Mm -hmm. After these messages, Pipistrella has made a huge commitment to electric aircraft with several models motivated solely by electrical power. I believe that if people use the landing doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training, and we do this with a crosswind 
We've been operating six Prestels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at SwiftFuelsAvgas.com. Welcome back. Jim finishes his interview with Mike and talks a bit more about Pipistrel's offering in the electric aircraft arena and the upcoming U.S. debut of the all-electric Pipistrel Velis. An electric aircraft is an area where Pipistrel has really made some strides. What's the current state of your electric aircraft offerings? Um, we're selling them hand over fist at the moment. We have basically two models. We have the Alpha Trainer version, which is electrified, that's called the Alpha Electro. And um, we're finding very, very good acceptance and rollout of those, even though electric aircraft can't be used for training in the US at the moment because of a, uh, a definition rule, but that's in the process of being changed. We also have the Taurus Electro, which is a self-launched sailplane. So the idea with that is you take off, you climb to 2,000 feet, the engine stows away, and then you go soaring. And that aircraft has got a glide ratio of 41 to 1. It's got its own trailer, so you don't need a hangar. So you can put it together in 10 or 15 minutes once you've done it a couple of times and uh, go flying and enjoy your day. We'll have one of those on display um, at, the, uh, at the Sun and Fun Expo as well. Oh, really? Wonderful. Yeah. Um, definitely have to reach out to your people about that. I've never flown it. Would love to if an opportunity presents itself. It's a fantastic aircraft. It, the Taurus used to be uh, powered by the 503 Rotax, mm -hmm. which, of course, has ceased production. But with the electric propulsion, it's a completely different aircraft. It's quiet. There's no vibration. Um, it's just a real joy to fly. Interesting. Now, you have one of the Velus coming to the U.S. here in the not-too-distant future? Um, oh, there's several Velus on, on the water at the moment. There's uh, two, three, four uh, coming in the next month to the U.S., and that's the, the Alpha Electro in its certified version. So it's the world's first certified electric aircraft. It has full EASA certification, and um, that will be going through the process to be a reciprocal reciprocal agreement with the U.S., with the FAA. But our FAA is a little bit behind the times when it comes to working with electric aircraft. I know you've had some heartburn about that. Where do we sit right now in regards to either experimental or certified and the use of electric aircraft? Well, experimental, you can do whatever you want with the electric aircraft, and, and they're all being operated that way at the moment. You can apply to the FAA for an exemption. So you can use it for flight training and some operators are doing that and quite successfully operating their aircraft fleet. Um, but hopefully um, the ruling will be changed. The FAA have previously accepted the electric aircraft um, rules from the ASTM, so they've accepted them. The binding spot is we have a um, one rule that defines a, a uh, LSA aircraft in the US, and that's got the word reciprocating engine mm -hmm. as a propulsion means. And that's that's a sticking point at the moment. It's just to remove that name, reciprocating or adding reciprocating and electric propulsion um, to the ruling. But the US is unfortunately the only country in the world at this time that has that limitation. Everybody else is um, allowing LSA electric aircraft to operate, and they're operating successfully. Outstanding. Now, you have an interesting scenario in all this because you're based in Australia. 
you're the U.S. distributor, uh, as well as other uh, locales, as I understand it. How do you keep an eye on all this? This has got to be a massive effort on your part. It is, but I've been with the company now for 22 years. So it's, it's sort of like, it's my job, it's what I do. I have a good network of um, just dealers in the US. So I look after them in an umbrella type operation and they're doing the day to day and I'm doing the liaison um, with the factory or if any problems happen, I, I sort those out. Shipping problems, maintenance problems. I look after all of that because of my strong relationship with the factory. Interesting. But, but our dealers in the US are, are very, very good. Mm. They, uh, you know, they attend training at least once every two years at the factory, mm -hmm. uh, even though we didn't have it last year and this year because of COVID, of course. But, um, you know, our dealer network is very, very strong and supportive and uh, customers are, are generally very, very happy. Outstanding. All right. Well, Michael, I can't thank you enough for spending a little bit of time with uh, Aero TV, Airborne, Aero News, and all of the arrows that are here. Uh, we've always enjoyed uh, greatly the opportunity to work with you in your aircraft, and our flight in Panthera several months ago was one of the highlights of the year. Had a lot of fun, and the best part was it did what it said it would do. You know, you, hear, you heard, was, yeah, you heard the naysayers. It'll never do 200 knots, and there I am yeah. at 200 knots all day long. You know, it was neat little airplane. Pipistrel are always really honest with their advertising. There's no fluffery in there. And um, a long time ago, you know, 15 years ago, we had a we had a thing, a program for about five years that said, if this aircraft doesn't do what's in the sale documents, we'll buy it back. Mm -hmm. We never had to buy a never brought an aeroplane back. And that built our reputation for um, for honest performance figures. And that's important to get market confidence. Outstanding. Once again, Michael, you've been our guest here on Airborne and Aero TV. We can't thank you enough. And we look forward to seeing all the toys at Sun and Fun in, ooh, 12 and a half days. Tick, tick, tick. It's tick. so close. We're it's really so looking close. forward to, uh, to it being an exhibitor and showing our uh, aircraft to new customers. Thank you, sir. My yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Airborne Special Edition, an interview series designed to bring special attention to topics of critical importance to the aviation community. This show will be a regular part of Airborne programming in the near future. Your suggestions for interview topics are always welcome and feel free to comment on our social media pages. Thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, ANN is the official news partner for the Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. Be sure to check out our coverage every day at the website you see on your screen. We'll see you next time.